Okay, so in this video I'm going to talk about where Snell's law actually comes from. Where is it derived? So first of all we've set up a scenario here in the diagram. So we've got an incident ray here approaching a boundary at theta 1 to the normal. So then I've broken it down into the two sides to make a right angle triangle. And then it's coming out of the boundary at angle of theta 2 to the normal. And again, I've built a right angled triangle here. So as you can see here, I've labeled various dimensions. So the total distance across here is A. The, one of the sides of this triangle is X and it's height H. Then we've got the height of this one, which is Y. And we've got A minus X being this side here. So then we've got these two hypotenuses, or hypotenuses, hypotenuses, whatever, d1 and d2. So using Pythagoras' equation, we've got these equations here for d1 and d2. So <laughs> since the material is the same before it hits the boundary and after, what you know is the speed of light is going to be constant while it's in the same boundary. So, let's put that into equation form. So, we can get this expression for the distance, d1, in terms of the speed of light in that medium, v1, and the time it takes to get there. As the principle we're using is that light always takes the, sh the quickest path to get between two points. So, it's always going to try and take the, 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 go the direction in which time is minimized. So if we can rearrange to get this expression for the time and then substitute in the values that we have to get this one and we can do the same thing for the time in the second one to get d2 and we come up with another expression for the total time. Okay, so we've got this expression here. So we've got the total time t is going to be the time in medium 1 plus the time in medium 2 which then we can substitute in these expressions for those times. So we want to minimize this time. So if we think about the graph of this, you get a minimum where the derivative is 0. So first of all, we need to calculate what the derivative is and then set it to 0. So let's take the derivative with respect to x here. So we've got, okay, so if we go through some, uh, it's not too complex maths, but there are some rules being used here, which I'm not going to explain. You can go away and research for yourself if you want to find out about them. Um, so if you've taken the derivative with respect to x of the above equation, you get this. And as we said, we want to set this to zero because at the time, time is so minimized is going to be equal to zero. So what we need to do is a bit of cleaning house here. Let's tidy up these equations. Okay, so all that's been done here is essentially having something to the power of minus a half on the top line is translated to having it just to the power of half on the bottom line, which we've done for both of these terms here. And the two and the halves have cancelled out in each time, leaving us with this expression here, and remembering we're setting that equal to zero. Now, at the moment, this is starting to look quite complicated, but if you look back at the original diagram, we're going to start to use some other laws in here to be able to simplify this expression. So if you look at the diagram, you should be able to see that the relationship This is some basic trigonometry using your Sokotoa rules, if you're familiar with those. So we're going to get these here. So we're going to get a minus x for d2. And now we're going to put our substitute our values from earlier into here, which gives us x over square root of x squared plus h squared in that one there or if you like x over x squared plus h squared to the half which you might 
recognize over here. And then here we're going to get, oh crikey, uh, yeah, a minus x over a minus x squared plus y squared all to the power of a half. Ooh, which magically, oh look at this, that's that expression there. So by setting that again, so substituting those values in, we get, this is where it suddenly becomes really simple really quickly. Now at this point we need to remember a few of the definitions from refraction. So you know that V1 is going to be C over N1. And you know that V2 is going to be C over N2. So let's rearrange those slightly so 1 over v1 is going to be equal to n1 over c and 1 over v2 is going to be n2 over c so we substitute those in And we get this expression here. So all we need to do now is do a little shifting around by adding the second hand side to the other side and cancelling the C's. We should get N1 sine theta 1 is equal to N2 sine theta and here you should recognize we have derived our expression for Snell's law.